the retrofit's part of our response to the challenge of climate change. We need to reduce our national carbon dioxide emissions and greenhouse gas emissions by 80% by 2050. And because our building stock is such a big contributor to those emissions, we have to start to look at retrofit. Well, we have um, about 26 million dwellings in this country and about 2 million non-domestic buildings. And we replace them at a very slow rate so that by 2050, more than 80% of the buildings that exist now will still be with us. So there's no opportunity really to replace them with more efficient buildings which use less uh, energy. We have to uh, retrofit. Some of them will, we may not need to because they're new. But the ones we do retrofit, uh, 20 million over 40 years is about half a million a year, which works out at about one a, one a minute if we deliver the programme properly. The retrofit guides are really to fulfil two, two functions. The first one is to encourage people to identify and take up the opportunities that this transformation of the industry involves. And secondly, they're to provide the technical guidance that underpins that as to how, how to go about retrofit and all the various complications that it involves. The retrofit guides are intended to be comprehensive. They deal, first of all, with the nature of the challenge. Secondly, they deal with uh, assessing dwellings for retrofit. They deal with uh, planning retrofit projects, whether it be individual dwellings or whole stocks of housing. They deal with what has to be done to the building fabric, what has to be done to the building services, with broader environmental issues like waste and water, and materials, and they deal with um, exploiting and marketing the opportunities that uh, people who take up retrofit uh, will want to deliver in the, in the new transformed industry. It's a very good time for the retrofit market at the moment. There are a lot of drivers coming into play. We're seeing the arrival of Green Deal and the energy company obligation, which will have a big impact on how householders decide to use energy at home. We're also seeing a time of challenges in the housing market, which mean that more people are choosing to stay put and renovate or refurbish their homes rather than move house. And with energy bills continuing to rise year on year, people are much more aware of the things that they can do to manage their energy costs at home. Homeowners are the main customers for retrofit. They still dominate the housing stock in the UK, with around about 60 to 70 percent of homes owned by the people that live in them. There are some other groups that shouldn't be forgotten, though. Many of our homes are still owned by social landlords, such as housing associations and local authorities. And they provide a really strong opportunity for innovation in retrofit. It's very important to think about the best time to market to your potential customer about retrofit. Homeowners may be more inclined to undertake a retrofit project when they've just moved into a new property and the whole place needs redecorating. For landlords, the best time is really to try and get them when properties are empty. So for student landlords, this would be during the summer months while the students are away. And for social landlords, this would be any void period between tenancies. Planning a retrofit project is absolutely critical. It's extremely important to understand the condition of the existing building, to understand the residents and what their needs are, and to think about whether they're going to be in occupation in the home during the works. Also to think about what the statutory consents may be, what the programme of work will be, whether it's going to be phased or in one hit, and how the contractor and the team are going to be procured, and how you're going to monitor the performance of the works and ensure quality at the end of the construction period. The plan is an extremely important tool for the asset management team and the social housing provider. It serves as a record as what is proposed to be installed as well as what actually has been installed. It's extremely important to consult and engage with the resident. Their acceptance of the proposals will mean the success of the project. It's also important to understand that residents' energy use patterns so that the retrofit measures can be tailored to the home and to them. When one plans, coordinates a um, retrofit, there are a number of ecological or green aspects you might bring to bear, um, such as um, considering what materials you can conserve on site, um, what materials, um, uh, new materials will have the lowest embodied carbon impact on the project, um, the processes and chemicals that are associated with the production of those materials and um, considering how much damage those have. Um, and then through to thinking about such, such things as rainwater and water management in general. Well, the main aim of carrying out the retrofit is to improve the thermal efficiency of the buildings. We all uh, live in cold, leaky homes and uh, we're, we're trying to reduce the 
uh, amount of heat that we have to put into them. We need to do that by adding insulation to the walls, to the roofs, to the floors, perhaps up improving the windows with double or triple glazing. And retrofitting is all about understanding how we can bring all those elements together successfully. Also when we've, we've improved the thermal insulation and we've, uh, uh, we, in parallel with that we need to improve the air tightness of the building. None of us like to sit in drafty environments so um, dealing with unwanted ventilation is a very important aspect. And you can't do that without also uh, considering how we then ventilate. We all need to uh, have fresh air to, to be um, healthy. So uh, it's combining all of those issues that makes retrofit so interesting but so challenging. Once we've uh, thoroughly insulated our building and reduced the space heating demand, the next biggest energy user is really our domestic hot water. So you need to, if you can, carry out that retrofit and treat it in the same way as you do the building, looking to super insulate your hot water cylinder and all the pipe work distribution, looking to reduce demand by uh, swapping taps with aerated uh, heads and shower heads and possibly introducing renewables through solar thermal collectors on your roof which will supply that hot water um, in a very low carbon manner. There are two key reasons why using a coordinator for retrofit work are I think um, essential. Uh, the first is about performance um, and ensuring that energy efficiency is actually delivered. Um, the second is about managing and reducing attendant risks associated with the works. If, if a coordinator is not present and, and the, the whole process sort of rolls from one stage to the next without um, a continuous overview, I think the dangers are that um, slips of information are made during the process and, and eventually that leads to um, lack of building performance and that's lack of value for, for the client. But um, perhaps more worrying is unintended consequences or potential chronic building defects which, which could be brought about through sort of unthinking works. The retrofit guides are designed to provide information for um, small businesses and individuals in the building industry and indeed to homeowners about how they might go about taking up the opportunities of retrofit and meeting this challenge. 